everyone, welcome back to She Tried It. This is the Sugar Plum Sweater by Knits and Knots. This is my third and final pattern test for her book release. This is also my third video of the series, so if you're not caught up yet, be sure to check out the Lakeside Mist Cardigan and the Champagne Glow Sweater videos that I made previously. I don't want you to be lost because I'm gonna keep the conversation going like you've been here the whole time. There will be timestamps below for each section of this video. I will also have a link to everything mentioned in this video in the description box below. Let's get started. Okay, last time we left off on how the champagne glow sweater was gonna be my last pattern test. Honestly, I'm gonna go ahead and blame this pattern test on We Crochet, who I want to thank for sponsoring today's video. But to explain further, a few weeks prior to this test, I put in an order for more Hawthorne fingering kettle dye yarn when I was completing the Urban Chic card by Designs by Key. When I received that yarn in the mail, for some reason an extra ball of yarn that I did not ask for was in the box. It was the bulkiest, softest, fluffiest thing I've ever touched in my life. In the Disney movie Princess and the Frog, Neo sings a song where the lyrics say, you're the best thing I never knew I needed. I promise that song played in my head when I picked this yarn up. I'll leave a link below if you have no clue what song I'm talking about. Anyway, this yarn is amazing. I'll rave more about it in the yarn portion of this video, but at first touch, I knew I needed to make something with this yarn very soon. I mentioned in my Pattern Tester 101 video how I make a list of things I want to make. I already had this yarn with the corresponding knit project on my schedule of things to make by the end of this year. I first heard about this yarn on the We Crochet podcast. I'm actually not sure how many people even knew We Crochet had a podcast, but it's really good. I forgot which episode, but I do recall Heather and Sarah talking about Wonder Fluff and how amazingly soft it was. With them being employees of We Crochet, I knew I needed to test it out for myself. Fast forward to literally the next day after I received this random yet amazing ball of yarn, Janine sent out her third round of pattern tests. What are the odds that this set of tests was primarily focused on bulky yarn? If you want to see the first 13 tests, be sure to check out my first two videos in this series. In Janine's third testing round email, the patterns she featured were Whispering Pines, 50 Below, Amber Magic, Silent Night, Infinite Prairies, Sugar Plum, and Wandering Willow. So yeah, they may deny it, but I stand by my claims that Janine and We Crochet were in cahoots and they set me up. Let's look at the facts. Number one, I didn't ask for this yarn. Number two, it's not a coincidence that I get this lovely bulky yarn and then a bunch of tests to use them on. Number three, I'm not a serial pattern tester, but here I am signing up for my fourth pattern test back to back. Who am I? Number four, I literally have a video comparing crochet to knit and I say something like, I would never crochet a sweater with bulky yarn because I live in Houston. Go back and fact check me. I can't believe they thought I wouldn't connect the dots. Like I said, a chunky crochet sweater was not on my list of things to make. But here we are, and even crazier than that, I am absolutely in love. I'm not proud of being a walking contradiction, so I want to try to explain myself. Yes, I never wanted to crochet a bulky sweater because I thought it would be way too dense. However, at that time, I had never heard of the crochet stitch used in this pattern. I know there are stitches that look like knit, but this is not one I've ever come across. You really need a trained eye to be able to tell that this isn't knit. Since this pattern uses a crochet stitch that looks exactly like knit, somehow the bulkiness isn't really an issue. The best way I can explain it is that it's structured but light at the same time. 
Another pro about this pattern is that it's a yoke sweater, so you can try it on as you go. The original design was a bit more of a longer body with crop sleeves. Since we had the freedom to make modifications, I modified the length of the sleeves. My sleeves measure about 16 inches from the armpit to the end of the sleeve. My thought process was that I wanted the sleeves to be long enough to keep my arms warm in cold weather, but short enough so that I could show off any jewelry I'm wearing and so that my sleeve doesn't get dirty when I wear it out to eat. I'm perfectly capable of getting food of myself when I eat. I don't need long sleeves being part of the issue. The original design has sleeves that hit slightly below your elbow. I will leave a link below to the hashtag for this sweater so that you can see the creative modifications other testers came up with. I think if you modify this pattern or not, you will absolutely end up with the top that you will love. One thing I will admit about this stitch is that I had a bit of a hard time getting going. Thankfully, Janine provided a picture tutorial for help. The real issue for me is that I'm a tight crocheter. This stitch requires you to be loose-handed, almost like your tension is on zero, but that was a bit unnatural for me. If you don't loosen your tension, this pattern will take much longer than it needs to. Since Sweet Crochet partnered with Janine to force me to make this pattern, this yarn and color choice were not made by me. Regardless, I am a huge fan. Lately, I've been trying to step out of my comfort zone and add a little bit of color to my Instagram feed, but I have to admit, it feels so good coming back to my little neutral bubble. I missed it here. This yarn is exclusively sold at We Crochet and it is called Wonder Fluff in the color Hair Heather. I will leave a link below to the exact yarn that I used. I'm sure in the past I've said something was the softest yarn I've ever felt, but scratch all of that. This is now the softest yarn. The website says this is softer than a kitten and fluffier than a cloud. I think even if you don't know what you want to make with this, it's worth purchasing just so you can feel it. The fiber content of this yarn is 70% baby alpaca, 7% merino wool, and 23% nylon. This is a blown yarn with a lightweight tube of nylon mesh. While this yarn is classified as bulky, it's not the density that makes it bulky, it's the fluff. If I twist this yarn, it looks like a thin thread. Another feature about this yarn that we cannot ignore is the halo. The halo on this yarn is insane. It looks like a thick mohair yarn, but there's no mohair in here. I think the look of this yarn paired with the stitch are a match made in heaven. I will absolutely be using this yarn again in the future. The Wonder Fluff line has some amazing color choices, but if you are in the mood for a bit more pizzazz, they have a Wonder Fluff ombre line, which provides a lovely gradient. I'll link that below as well. That's all I have for you today. Don't forget to check the description box below for all the things I mentioned this video. Also, don't forget to pre-order your Modern Crochet Sweater book. I'll have a link below to the Amazon link. She is providing a physical book and an ebook. Shout out to We Crochet and Janine for teaming up to trick me, but the joke's on you because I got a bomb sweater out of your little plot. See you in my next video. Bye!